Hey, what's happening guys? Dave Brown here, and today we're gonna work on a super simple blues. So simple, it might be the easiest kind of blues you can play. So even if you've never picked up the guitar before, today's day one, you can still probably hang. We're gonna learn some good technique with it. Uh, we're also gonna cover terminology, like 12 bar blues form, what that is. Turnarounds, one, four, five, all that stuff you've probably heard before, but you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. Now you're gonna know what they're talking about. And even if you think this is going to be too easy, I wouldn't click off just yet. Covering a basic blues, having that under your belt to be able to jam with some people, being able to groove a slow blues, that's some really good stuff. Even the technique stuff, I have intermediate players that come to see me and they're still doing this bad habit. So let's fix that bad habit today. And I'll even teach you the intro that I played at the beginning. So grab your git and let's get going. So before we just jump in and try to learn this whole thing, let's talk technique with both the left hand and the right hand first, just to make digesting the song way easier. It'll just be good to kind of establish this right off the bat. So starting with the right hand, we need to be able to play two strings that are next to each other, specifically the fifth and the fourth string of the song. Okay. So the pick needs to be able to go through both strings and then get physically stopped by the third string. So, you know, some of you might be kind of like playing individually first, some of you might, the pick might be going into the air. You want to kind of curb this because when you start learning other things and applying other stuff, this is just going to go out the window. But this is so foundational for this that, you know, it's a great thing you can even just kind of get mastered on the couch, Netflix style. But once you got it, there's going to be a specific rhythm that we're going to need to be able to play with. So that rhythm is going to be eighth notes or swung eighth notes and it's going to sound like this. Once you got that going, you're pretty much halfway there, but while we're still on topic with the right hand, we're also going to try and palm mute this, but I wouldn't really worry about mastering the palm mute before you can play the song, but again, we're already here, so I'm just going to talk about it now. So, in order to palm mute, if you've never done this before, you're just going to take your right hand, just the side of it, and there's about a centimeter of a sweet spot where the strings breach the bridge and that's where you want your hand to live. So most of you right off the bat are kind of coming at an angle and so you're, you're going to be applying it unevenly, right? So which is fine if you're only playing a couple of strings, but if you're playing multiple strings, you'll have some that are super dead because the farther you go up, obviously, we're looking for that kind of subtly muted sweet sound. So like on the strat, there's these little screws that come out of the bridge, on the, you know, on the saddle. So I like to dig my hand like really into the saddles. You can even tuck your pinky behind like a volume knob to kind of start to get you the idea of what that should feel like. All right, now let's take a look at the left hand. On the left hand, we're going to start with our first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. And the whole object of this game right now is going to be able to stretch our ring finger to the fourth fret without taking that first finger off. And the reason being is because we're cutting off the vibration at the fourth fret, so anything that happens behind it is not going to affect that note whatsoever. So I see a lot of beginners come in to me, and intermediate players even, that will kind of do this whole dance where they take the first finger off, goes back and forth. That's two steps you didn't need to do. If you just keep the first finger down, really all you have to do is move the ring finger. Okay? So really good form to instill that it literally applies everywhere. So this is a really good thing to just take the time to get it down, right? So once you've got that stretch going, you know, first of all, you want to get it right up next to the frets because this might be far for some, some of you. You also want to get on the tips of your fingers. If this is too far, if you notice the frets up above are a little bit smaller. Technically the frets are still the same size, but the space in between them, you know what I'm saying? So you can work your way back and slowly stretch out that hand. but. Once you're able to do that on the 2nd to the 4th fret, we're going to apply that rhythm. And again, you can palm you if you want, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress out about it. And then once you got that rhythm back and forth, let's try it with both the 5th and 4th string. So 5th string's open. So, once you got those reflexes down, that's pretty much all you're going to need to be able to do to play this whole song. The rest is just knowing what to put, what, where, and who, and why. 
right? So when we're placing our first finger on the second fret of the fourth string and playing the fifth string with it, that is known as an A power chord. So when you make this shape, later this will translate to up and down the neck like that. Um, but for right now, open power chord is super easy, super fun. Um, you're just going to play that open string in the second fret. And whatever the open string is, that's going to be the name of that chord. In the song, we're also going to go to a D power chord. D5. So we just have to move down and play the fourth and the third string. We're also going to play an E power chord, which is on the sixth and the fifth string. Okay? So we just have to do that same thing for each one. So it's really just copy and paste and know where to put it, which brings us to the 12 bar blues form. So before I explain exactly what a 12 bar blues is, I think it's just going to be easier if I just tell you what the chords are for the song and then tell you how that is a 12 bar blues after the fact. So for the first four bars, you're going to be playing an A chord that entire time. Just chill on an A. Pretty relaxed. Measures 5 and 6, you're going to move down to the ground and play the D chord. Measure 7 and 8, you're moving back up one string to the A. Measure 9, you're going to move all the way up to the E. Measure 10, you're going to hop over the A and go down to the D. And measure 11, you're going back up to A. And then on measure 12, we're going to play a riff. So measures 11 and 12 is what's known as the turnaround. Okay, So this is kind of where a lot of the magic happens, a lot of the, uh, the build-up as it releases and re it resolves to the one chord on the beginning of the form. So you, you kind of hear that a lot. There's many different ways to do turnarounds. Um, you know, that's a whole nother, whole nother video. But that's in what's indicative of each blues song. It's like the turnaround kind of makes that specific song. Obviously the lyrics and tempo and all other stuff, but that's a huge signature of a blues. So we'll be playing a riff over that. So in order to explain the blues form, I'm just gonna have to quickly explain some basic theory. Um, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, that's what everybody's familiar with, it's a major scale. Instead of Do, Re, Mi, you can think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just. So there's seven notes in the scale. Um, and where chords come from is you go every other note. So instead of one, two, three, you go one, three, five, two, four, six. And then you play those notes together. And that's where we get these chords. So you have the chord that's built off of the one, do, or the two, re, three, four, and five. So when people say there's a blues is a one, four, five, they're referring to the chord that's built off the one, chord that's built off the four and the chord that's built off the five. In this key, in this song, we're in the key of A. So A, again, we don't need to get crazy with it, but it'll actually be pretty simple if we just, luckily we're in the start of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E. So D is four, E is five. It's not always going to be this easy. We just happen to be in a key where four and five are natural, so you could just count to the letters. Um, no sharps or flats, although there are, we just skipped over them. But yeah, that's what this basically translates to. So usually with the blues, you're on the one chord for the first four bars, hence we're on the A for the first four bars. Then you go to the four chord for bars five and six, back to the one chord for bars seven and eight there, over to the five chord on bar nine, down to the four chord on bar 10, to the one chord on bar 11, and then you got that turnaround. So I keep hinting at the turnaround. Let's just learn that. That's the one last thing we got to cover before we can put this whole blues together. So the turnaround is going to start with a normal A. And then you're going to just stretch your middle finger to the sixth string third fret. And you're going to play that. And then you're going to play the open sixth string. So it's like you're starting it again. You just play A, sixth string, third fret, and then open. You can even snap that string off and drag your finger down to the ground so it pulls off. It's called a pull off. And then after that kind of hangs for a second, you're gonna play the open six string again. Third fret, fourth fret. And that's it, that's all the pieces. And again, a lot of what is gonna come down to your ability to play this sooner than later is gonna be the transition. So I would definitely recommend, even though I'm gonna put it all together for you right now, just sit down with a metronome or a drum beat or just Netflix and just go back and forth between two chords, um, any transitions you're gonna have to do. So for instance, A to D, um, you're gonna have to do A to E, and then you're gonna have to do E to D. So for instance, A to E. A to D would be and then A to E and then E to 
D. And then I would also loop that turnaround lick too. So you can either do that with just the last measure. Last two measures, so full bar of A, full what? Full bar of A. All right, so that's it. We just got to put the whole thing together. This is what it sounds like. I'll count us in, and we'll play the full form. One, two, three, four. So that'll do that for that whole 12 bar blues. Again, once you get that down, just loop it over and over and over again and get it to groove. That's how you know you have something. Do not move on until you're able to do something four times in a row without messing up. Plenty of room for flukes in music. Now let's cover that intro because I promised and it's the coolest part and it'll be a lot of fun. So we're gonna start with our first finger on the second string, eighth fret, okay? Then we're gonna surround it with our middle finger on the ninth fret of the third string ring finger on the ninth fret of the first string. So if you've ever made a D7 chord, that's literally what we're doing. We're just doing it up at the eighth and ninth fret, okay? And we're gonna play triplets right off the bat, which you don't really necessarily need to understand. Um, just know that you're dividing the B in three. So in the way we're gonna divide that amongst this chord is we're gonna play the third string, first and second string together, and then third string. So it's like one, two, three, okay? Now you can play that all with your pick, or if you've never heard of or have never tried hybrid picking before, if you have, I, it's fun. It, it works. So, of course it works. So if you want to hybrid pick this chord, I would dedicate the pick to the third string, middle finger to the second string, and ring finger to the first string. And again, we're going to pick the first note, then kind of snap these strings. I kind of just get underneath the strings a little and kind of snap away. It just gives a nice, nice sound to it. Um, so pick. Both of the fingers pick, that's one, two, three. One, two, three, and all you have to do is move it back one fret, and then back one fret again, and then back one more fret. However, this time we're gonna have to flatten our first finger to bar the first and second string on the fifth fret. So you'll kind of have to shift, although you will be on the same fret, so you want to think of it like that, you'll just want to kind of get underneath. So that's gonna be a good transition to be able to kind of just play those two chords. So, and you play that chord twice, so. From here, we're gonna hop over to the fifth string, fourth fret with our first finger. Middle finger's gonna grab that fifth fret, same string, fifth string. And we're just gonna continue to walk up that fifth string. Sixth fret, seventh fret, okay? At this point, you can play the open sixth string, and then you're going to fix the same exact shape that we just started with. So your middle finger is already down, so put your first finger on the sixth fret of the fourth string, ring finger on the seventh fret of the third string. So again, it's that same D7 shape, right? So that's going to be it. So in context, again, we're index, middle, 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 hit the open string, fix the rest of the chord, play that, and then the so here it is all in context. And then you're off to the races. 
guys, I hope you dug this lesson. Do not hesitate with any questions. Throw them in the comments below. I will respond. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. I'm trying to grow this channel here in 2024. And thanks. We'll see you next time. Cheers.